And so now we're going to go into a little bit more depth on critical values. Um, so if you remember, we look at H1 to determine the type of test, meaning do we have a one or two tail test? We care about that a lot. So in terms of a two tail test, if we're looking at H1, then we're going to see the not equal to symbol. And that means that there's going to be two tails, so two critical values. And each critical value is going to have alpha over two as the area that's in its nearest tail. And so to kind of draw this picture, I've got my two critical values with alpha over two in each tail. This one's basically like a confidence interval, but I do want to point out, I listed that we have my positive and negative critical value. And if you remember, we're not going to have a negative lower critical value for chi-squared if we're doing a standard deviation test because the chi-squared table starts at zero, but I was just using the bell-shaped curve for a generic visual. Next, we want to talk about a left tail test. And so when we look at H1, we're going to be seeing the less than symbol. And if we have a left tail test, then we know that we have a one tail test. And so there's only going to be one critical value. And that means that we're going to have all of alpha in the left tail. So we're not splitting alpha between two tails. All of alpha goes in the left tail. And I'll just have my one critical value on the left side, which here again I wrote as negative, but it won't be negative if you're using the chi-squared table for a standard deviation test. And lastly, our other one tail test is a right tail test, which uses the greater than symbol in H1. And so we're only gonna have the one right critical value where all of alpha is in that right tail. And that'll be positive for all of the tables that we use.